Well, hi, welcome back to my workshop. It is post Ceph update time. So let's just skip right into the intro music. All right, so if you haven't seen the Maiden flight video, I highly recommend that you go back and watch that video. If not, I'm sure it'll you know, be at the end of this video, whatever. Anyway, so go ahead and have a look at that flight, but I want to cover events that led up to it as well as what happened after because it was kind of a bit of an ordeal and the video that you saw was it was beautiful I mean it's just absolutely beautiful flight and I wanted to share that with you all and uh, let you know that it was a little bit more involved and I didn't want to wait a whole long time to get home and get you know back into the groove of my life and then shoot this video I wanted to get that content to you as soon as possible um, so Flew it on Wednesday, May 1st, and initially, um, you know, everything checked out okay. And um, I did a throttle up test and noticed a little bit of a vibration. I was like, okay, well, props a little out of balance, but it'll be fine. So I line up on the runway and uh, start heading down the runway, and all of a sudden the motor just cuts out. Uh, I'm, I haven't left the ground, and I try to throttle the taxi back, and it's just the propeller is twitching so bring it back and consult with buddies and we determined that it's probably a loose connection on the motor I look inside the cowl and sure enough I can see one of the bullet connectors had fallen out of the castle ESC so castle ESC's for those who don't know at least the Talon 90 they don't have motor lead wires they have bullet connectors that are soldered directly on the ESC and they come with these big fat bullets. <clears throat> well, one of them, um, I had the bullet that goes into it, uh, the one that had fallen out, the tains had been crushed. So there's a bunch of these little tains that sort of stick out and cause tension as you stick it in the, in the plug. And somehow or other, I, it got crushed and I didn't notice it. And anyway, so the vibration had caused that to vibrate out. Um, and I... I got, just got lucky, <laughs> really got lucky. So I took it back to the pits um, and uh, found that after removing the prop and then the cowl, which is a pain, and uh, fixed that all up, spread the chains out with a screwdriver, plugged it in, everything's super secured, not a problem. Uh, but I still had the vibration issue. So then on the Maiden, obviously everything went fine, took off was just fine. Needed some uh, right roll on the trim and uh, quite a bit of up elevator, which was surprising, uh, considering uh, my center of gravity was on the aft end of the CG range, and I had added an additional 1800 milliamp hour three cell pack as ballast for the maiden flight. So it was a little bit forward of that, probably right around the center line for, uh, for the maiden flight for the center of gravity range. Uh, but yeah, it still needed quite a bit of, of up elevator. Uh, whether or not is because of my elevator uh, not being dead center. I thought it was center. I used my usual techniques to make sure it was center. But either way, it was surprising. But there's no bad tendencies. Handled the weight just fine. And then we landed, and um, I just uh, you can you can hear it in some of the flight video. The whole reason I have the the music in that video is primarily to drown out the background music. So, copyright claims on YouTube. That, that, that it's annoying, but you know the, it's great at the event. I love having the music at the event. But there it is. Um, so, uh, after the flight, brought it back and uh, had a had a closer look at the at the prop. So I changed from the Master Airscrew Classic prop to an APC prop that I had on hand, just as a backup in case it broke or whatever. And the vibration was still there. And then I changed from the prop nut, the domed prop nut for the P47, and changed it to a regular prop nut, uh, just a regular old nut with a washer. And it wasn't as pronounced, but it was the vibration was still there. And because of the shortness of the prop shaft, 
uh, and how thick the hub of the uh, master air screw prop is, I couldn't use that nut to fly the airplane. So I was like, well, I could fly with an APC, but I'd really rather just resolve this vibration issue. So um, after that, uh, Carl, my buddy, we tried his prop nut. Vibration was still there. Try he actually had a spare, a brand new one on hand. So we tried that nut problem was still there so we knew it wasn't the prop nut and so then I said okay well um, did I actually balance the propeller because normally whenever I get a propeller it's the first thing I do is I balance it but I looked at the propeller and it's still master air screw props have this uh, flashing uh, it's just a ridge around the perimeter of it from the molding process and that was still there which is number one because I always sand that back so I knew I hadn't properly balanced that prop so I went back, I did balance it. It wasn't off very much, but I did properly balance. Vibration was still there. So I determined that it was my prop adapter. So uh, I did not get the bolt-on style prop adapter for the E-Flight Power 60 motor. I did use the compression collet adapter that comes with the motor. And usually people say that uh, the compression collets have better centering. And I heard this from Craig at Horizon as well, and it, it both sh shocked us, but nevertheless, the, the vibration was still there. Luckily, Craig did look in his stash, and he did have that prop adapter, the bolt-on adapter, which is very kind. He, he gave me that, so I took my Dremel, and I cut off the motor shaft that protrudes. Rather than go through and try to push back the, the prop shaft, because that was going to if I extended it back, it was going to protrude through the sound box for the sound module. So I was like, just hack it off. Uh, after that, no vibration issue. Instantly running perfectly. So um, the other thing, the other thing that I had noticed when I pulled the cowl off to do the surgery on the motor uh, with the Dremel was that the chin scoop, the 3D printed chin scoop, had actually melted to the plastic of the 3D printed dummy radial. And the vibration had broken the glue joints from them. And so I thought, oh, I mean, they're fused together. Don't worry about it. This comes back to bite me a little bit. Uh, so uh, this is this is mostly Thursday. Well, most of the troubleshooting was done Wednesday. And then Thursday, I was able to get the prop adapter because I didn't want to fly it again unless I had the proper uh, uh, equipment to remove that vibration. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes. And so Thursday, I get everything resolved, uh, and I go to fly in the afternoon. And again, it's a great flight. There's no bad habits. All my trims are set. Um, and then I push the flight further. Uh, so the flight, the initial maiden flight was only like three, three and a half minutes, because I never know what my back, my packs are going to come down at. So I push the flight out to uh, four minutes, just to extend a little bit further, see where my packs were going to be and they came down at 3.75 volts per cell, which is okay. I prefer to fly around five minutes and have like a minute or two buffer in case I'm at an event and I need to go around again for allowing someone else to land who's having an emergency or something. So it was a little bit lower than I was hoping, but that's okay because I felt like I needed ballast anyway. So I started looking at all the different vendors. Uh, Flex was there with their packs. They had big stuff, but wasn't exactly the size I was looking for. I was looking around like a 7,000. So I got one of the um, the smart batteries from Horizon. They had a 7,000 six cell pack that Craig, again, was nice enough to let me use. And then later he ended up giving me the dumb thing. And it's a huge shout out to Horizon. They're such good guys. They're just like, yeah, we want you to go fly. After that, uh, during that flight, I noted that when I came down, the, the prop nut was really, really hot. And then I noticed that the dummy radial was sagging a little bit. And then it dawned on me, where's my chin scoop? So the chin scoop had fallen off and it had gone inside the cowl and it was sitting down at the bottom. And the dummy radial was rubbing on the motor the whole time. So the lower pack voltage may have been due to that rubbing, I don't know. Uh, but it was certainly of concern. So I pulled the cowl off again, repaired the chin scoop, re-affixed the dummy radial, and I was all set for Friday. 
So Friday, I decided to fly with the um, the first flight I flew with without the 1800 milliamp hour 3S pack, and it flew fine. Center of gravity was fine. Had to adjust my elevator trims a little bit because it was wanting to climb a little bit more because of that, but it, it flew fine. I forgot to check the voltage <laughs> afterward. I uh, immediately went to charge the packs to fly a different plane, um, so I just forgot to check the packs. Um, and then flights two and three, I flew on the 7000, and those were solid five minute flights. Uh, again, I didn't use the 1800 3S pack, but I am using a 2200 3S pack for the sound module. Uh, flew great. Uh, so I got two more flights in, had the, the airplane on display. I did try one flight with uh, the drop tanks. One of them fell off after tank off, and I think it's just because I trimmed the the clips too, too much that are on the drop tanks. So just print new ones, glue it on there with some CA, and, and try again. But uh, other than that... Um, uh, all I can recommend to you guys is, um, um, you know, it, it's a fantastic flying airplane. Don't be afraid to pack on a little bit of weight. Again, this airplane is 15.2 pounds, and Carl's airplane, which has the retractable tail wheel on it, so he had to offset that weight in the front with a huge 8,000 success in the front. And he gets like 8-minute flight times on that, and he's on an APC prop. Um, I mean, 1.2 1 1 pounds is not a bad weight penalty considering all the details that are in this thing. Um, so props, I want to say I did order a four blade uh, prop and I knew going into it is probably going to look stupid. It was a 14 by 8 FMS prop. And while it fits on the hub just barely, uh, it doesn't have enough length for me to tighten a bolt onto us so I thought maybe display it just looks stupid it looks so stupid with the smaller prop diameter so the other option is to go with a 17 by 9 FMS prop just for static display that has a four blade I may go that way the props are only like 20 bucks or something but what I am going with is I'm going with my tried and and tested Zor props uh, I've got one coming in the mail should be here tomorrow uh, they they just perform so well. They're quieter, so you know that the uh, um, the energy is going into flying the airplane and not beating against the air. And yeah, you're you're not, you're not losing energy. Uh, while I love the sound of the Master Air Screw Classic prop, it's just so darn heavy, and I know that I can extend my flight times of just a little bit longer if I'm swinging a lighter wood prop. The other th issue with the Master Air Screw prop is because it's so loud, the audio system, the sound system, it, you just can barely hear it when it's in the air. It's fine when it's taxiing or coming in for landing, but you just can't hear it when it's up in the sky. Again, it's a drawback to these uh, sound systems that is just hard to overcome without packing it full of these transducers, which I'm just not willing to do. Okay, so radio signal. I tested uh, a model that I had there on my my system, and I'll, I'll put up a picture of a graph that I made. And looking at the telemetry of the RSSI signal, you're looking at a difference of 10% of loss of signal uh, in the P47 over the Sundowner, which was my test platform. Sundowner is another Hangar 9 airplane. It's a 50 size. It's all balsa. But, uh, I mean, the critical level of RSSI signal is at 20%. Okay, that, that, that's RSSI low for the FR Sky system. And I never even got close to that. And for the most of the flight, you can see in the graph that it just, it's basically the same as flying anything normal. So I don't have any concerns about uh, doing anything, the aluminum in terms of signal interference. We did do low power ground checks. Uh, Carl had his X10S and he did a range check, a low power range check on his model. And he, his distance was a little bit further than mine, maybe 10 yards, uh, maybe 15 or so. It was a little bit further, but not bad. Uh, so the other thing we tested was heat. Carl had an infrared thermometer and he was taking temperatures all over the plane on painted parts as well as reflective parts. And uh, consistently the temperature on the P47 
was 20 degrees cooler on my model than on Carl's. So that's good to know. Um, the last thing I want to cover is what further I need to do on this model. Okay, so inside the tail gear bay, there is a cloth cover. Uh, this was to prevent rocks and dirt and other debris from interfering with the hydraulic system that was in the tail. So I want to try to replicate that because of the same reasons, really. Uh, dirt and debris getting up in there and interfering with that with that tail gear can be problematic and it's just a nice feature to have and at this point I'm confident enough in the CG that I can stand another half an ounce if that of cloth and CA so not not an issue and I think it'll be a long-term investment that'll be worth it I want to paint inside the cowl the cowl when you look at it in the sunshine you can clearly see the fiberglass weave of the inside of the cowl reflecting off of the fuselage surface. It's annoying. You look inside uh, on the chin scoop and you can again see those. So I need to do a little research to make sure I get the right color for the inside. It varies from what I'm seeing. Um, again, most of the pictures that I'm looking at are black and white, but the color ones they do have a restored airplanes. If it's not the chromate yellow, it's looking like it's black, but I want to confirm that. So uh, still looking. Uh, repairs that I have to do. There are some dents. Um, there are some dents from a couple of things, uh, mostly from removing the stupid cowl. Uh, the screwdriver does rub up, rub up against the fuselage a little bit when I remove, have to remove and reinstall the cowl. So I've got to fix those and then repolish them. There are a couple of areas that I saw inconsistencies in the bright sunshine that uh, I want to polish those up too. I want to polish the spinner. Uh, it kind of looks out of place to me and I think it'll be worth the effort to go through and polish that aluminum spinner as well and obviously I'll check for balance after that. I need to recalibrate the throttle on my ESC. The last 5 to 10 percent of the throttle stick uh, wasn't having any response and this was with the prop off. Uh, so I want to go back and do that. And that leads me to next events. Whole bunch of events coming up in my area. The Northern Virginia Radio Control Club, uh, my buddy Carl's a member of there. They're having a winter build competition, end of winter build. Uh, so that's on May 16th next week. So I plan on going to that and bringing the Corsair as well. Uh, Warbirds over Gettysburg, that's on June 8th. Might go to that. Airplanes of the World, 15. That's at Free State Air Modelers Field in Beltsville, Maryland, and that's on the 22nd of June. Of course, I will be going to Flight Fest in Malvern, Ohio from July 11th to 14th. Uh, love that event. Go to it every year. Love seeing people inspired by my builds as well as being inspired by their creativity and their builds. It's a wonderful event. Bring your kids. It's, it, it really is a, a fantastic full family event. Uh, the last event that I'll probably be going to is, uh, again here in Maryland, Warbirds over Boyd's. Uh, in, in Boyd's, Maryland, just down the road, and that's on July 27th. Beautiful facility, paved runway, had a blast last year with the Corsair, so uh, I think I'll, I'll be attending that one as well. So pretty packed, pretty packed. Uh, that's five additional events, and last year I hit five total events, so if I get to six, I'm, I'm doing pretty well, I think. So yeah, we're getting into flying season, and I still have a couple of projects coming down here that I'll be covering in the coming weeks. Uh, pretty neat one that is uh, through flight test and I've got a couple of other ideas for instructional videos that, that can get your ideas rolling for your winter builds as well. So as usual, get into your shop and fix those flying works of art since it's flying season now and go out and fly them because I want to see your flying work of art.